This video was edited down from a longer stream, like multiple hours. So there's gonna be some jumping around as I get through the different points of my review here. Thanks for tuning in. What's up guys? Today we are doing a unboxing and review of the Ambernick RG 353PS. Kind of a mouthful. Here is the box. I'm using the kind of worst camera right now in order to um, film my face. Hey, PBver, what's up? I'm using the crappy camera on my laptop to film my face because I'm using my better camera that I usually use for my face. Um, that's what we'll be using to film the unboxing, which is gonna be over there. So um, we're gonna be reviewing this. We're gonna be unboxing it. We're gonna be checking it out. Pretty excited about this. Been waiting for it for a little while here. All right, so here's the other view here. Actually, let's pull up like the, the specs and stuff. So this is the Ambernick RG353PS. Oh, it now ships from the US. That's funny, when I got it, it would only ship from China. Ambernick is a Chinese company, but they're one of the better um, retro handheld companies that are out there. Oh, look at that. It's actually on sale um, for 87. I got it for 94. So if you want to get one of these after the review, it's on sale a little bit. There's a couple different colors, or three different colors, actually. There's a clear, like crystal color. There's a color that I got that we're going to be unboxing here, which they call the, what do they call this one? <clears throat> I don't know. I'd call it like the DMG, the DMG original Game Boy. It has a Game Boy color buttons. It has a Game Boy color shell. And it has this like kind of clear purple one as well. It comes with a 3.5 inch IPS display. It's uh, 640 by 480, which is, you know, it's not crazy high resolution, but it's a very small display. I mean, it looks really nice. I did open it a little bit just to get the Wi-Fi on there and stuff already. So we didn't have to do too much of that when we first logged on here. This chip that's in here is a popular one with a lot of these con a lot of the recent Ambernet consoles. This is RK3566. That's the chipset that's on this thing. It's also on the 350 35RG353P and a couple other Ambernet devices. The chip um, is able to handle up to Dreamcast, PSP, PlayStation, and Nintendo 64. I think PSP is the one it has the most trouble with, but it supports some PC ports, PSP, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, PS1, Nintendo 64, uh, Nintendo DS. Some of these ones, I'm not sure what they are. I know Neo Geo, PC Engine, uh, GBA, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Super Famicom, Famicom, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Master System, Mega Drive, or Genesis, Game Gear, MSX, PC Engine, Wonder Spawn Color, all kinds of stuff. You can order it for additional cost with a 128 gigabit micro SD card, which comes preloaded with just an absolute metric butt ton of games. You know, I think we can talk about it more as we go. So I say, let's just start unboxing it. I did, again, I did take it out um, once earlier than this. I, I just did it to make sure it worked and everything. Make sure um, I set up the Wi-Fi real quick as well, because it does have Wi-Fi, it does have a Wi-Fi chip, has Bluetooth as well. Another thing that it has that I'm pretty excited about, actually the most excited about is mini HDMI out. You can play it on the go, and then you can use it as a console. <clears throat> so this is the box it comes in. Uh, pretty standard. It's a nice box though. It feels white. There you can see the, they call this one the gray. Actually, I don't know if it's gonna, it's gonna be really close, so it might not be and focus there but this is the gray they have transparent white and the transparent purple as well there's the amber nick and again there's a model number rg 353 ps not much else on there so let's i do like the little graphic it has on the front as well that's pretty cool <clears throat> once again guys i did open this once before just set up the wi-fi and everything so we didn't have to do that on stream it comes in a little baggy here So here it is, little foam protector. It also, this thing came very well protected. Like I, I was impressed at the amount of bubble wrap, the amount of, um, they had bubble wrap on there. They had these like uh, air tube things on there. Just very well protected all around. So here's the device. It already has a little bit of dust on it because I was messing with it earlier. And we'll get back to this in just a sec. Let's set it down for a moment. See what else is in the box. 
Okay, cool. So it does come, looks like it does come with a little screen protector, which is nice. Glass screen protector. There are some wipes. Looks like this is the little manual, which I'm hoping has some sh some hotkey. Yes, it does. Okay, it has it has hot hotkey options. Cause like some of this stuff, key operation. If you want to like turn down the brightness, adjust the volume, different stuff like that without going into system settings, it does have like hotkeys for that. And I think there should be a cord here. So let's check that out. If I can open it, no, it's, okay. There it is. So yeah. I'm thinking this. I'm assuming this is just a micro USB. I'm sorry, USB C. Sorry. Yeah, USB C. So this is a USB C cord. You know, your average USB C cord. Pretty standard stuff there. I'm gonna keep this out, and I'm gonna keep the USB C cord out in case we need it. I don't think we will because we're gonna be using the uh, micro SD cards. And we'll set this aside, and we'll start getting into the actual hardware side of things. So I, I, I got some other stuff here for reference. As you can see, we have a Game Boy Advance there. We have the Pal Kitty V90 here, which was my first, well, I don't know about my first, but my first better retro handheld. Better is a relative term because the Pal Kitty V90, I, I, I still think this is the best budget retro handheld device you can get right now, the Pal Kitty V90. You can get this thing for like 35 bucks, 40 bucks, honestly. Um, and, and actually, we'll probably get into that in a minute and just show that a little bit just so we can have a reference then as we get into this one here. And then of course, size comparison, here's the Game Boy Advance. Uh, it's a little bit bigger, but not much. Oh, there's a Pokedex, ignore that. Actually, yeah, barely bigger, but I would say the Game Boy Advance is actually a little bit thicker in the very back, but it tapers off obviously. But yeah, so that I just brought that out for comparison and just, you know, have some decorations in the background there. Get that Pokédex out of the way. Unless we need to identify some Pokémon later or something. Oh, here's just one more <laughs> little handheld. I almost forgot I had this thing. Look at that. So this one literally fits within the screen. This one's really cool too. This one is a Frogger handheld it's all it plays is frogger look how tiny it is i love this thing it's all scratched up probably because it's been in my pockets and stuff I, it's probably not even charged either let's find out oh it turned on look at that look at this this is literally just frogger on a tiny little screen it's like here's my thumb compared to the screen it's probably the size of a stamp but this thing's pretty fun too even as audio but anyways, turn it back off for now. There's another little handheld, <laughs> I guess, for for even more reference. And then I guess since we're talking about the other ones, we can talk about the Pal Kitty real quick. So here's the Pal Kitty V90. The screen is a bit bigger. I think, well, not even that much bigger, I think. Well, it is a little bit bigger, but I think mainly the aspect ratio. I have a custom firmware on this one. Normally it has a stock firmware. This, this, these things are great too. If you're looking for a super uh, budget friendly way onto this, on, into like the retro handheld world here, this is a great one to have. It's Pocket of United, it's shaped like a Game Boy Advance SP. It has these uh, little Nokia batteries. Actually, this isn't even the original one. I've replaced the original one and you can get these for like five bucks. Um, this one is interesting as we, we can actually compare it to this as we go, but. So a lot of these retro handhelds have what I guess inline shoulder buttons. So this is R2, this is R1. So rather than like this one that has the actual stacked shoulder buttons, it's a really nice feature. This one is the stacked shoulder buttons. A lot of these older, these like retro handhelds don't have them. They have these inline ones, which was really weird for me at first. It does work though. Like you, you'd be surprised. You can like kind of just rock your fingers like that. I was thinking it wouldn't work at first, but it's fine. Has a headphone jack, USB-C trying to get to the game or the systems here there we go so all kinds of stuff game boy game boy advance 
NES, Super Nintendo, uh, Sega Master System, ColecoVision, uh, Sega Mega Drive or Genesis, depending on your region, Atari 2600, Atari Lynx, PC Engine. I mean, this thing has, it can, all your like 16 bit systems and, and below it can run basically. You can play PlayStation on here and it works sort of like here's Mega Man 8. Some games work, some games are not gonna work on the PAL KDB 90 for the PlayStation. So that's one thing that this, this, this one does better is it can handle more powerful systems, Nintendo 64. This one could not play Nintendo 64. We won't be able to play Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, none of that. This one can handle a lot more. There you go, you got Mega Man doing his thing here. Anyways, you're not really supposed to do that, but it's okay. So, back to the Ambernick RG353PS. <laughs> you got it's hard to remember the name sometimes. Do a little hardware tour here. Got the D-pad. Nice D-pad. Better than better than the uh Pow Kitty there. Ambernick D-pads are known for being pretty good, pretty high quality. Select, start. Um, I think it's just like a function button. This one's a power button. Got your four buttons here. I haven't played on this thing yet. Some people have complained they're a little small, a little close together. I guess that's kind of true. Like my whole thumb can cover it. I don't think it's going to bother me too much, but I've seen some people talk about it as a bit of a negative. So if you have big thumbs or you like, you know, moving your thumb around a lot when you're gaming, that's something to think about. Has these two thumbsticks here, analog sticks. Um, the very reminiscent of Switch Joy-Con. So if you have a Nintendo Switch, it feels almost exactly the same, a little bit smaller, I think, than the Switch Joy-Cons. But it does have the R, uh, R3 and L3 clicks. So those are there. Has a volume rocker up top. Here is the HDMI out, the mini HDMI out. It has a USB-C here for interfacing with your computer. And I need to turn, I'm like getting out of the screen here. There we go, turn my camera a little bit. And then it has a USB-C here for charging only. So charging, computer interface, controller interface, stuff like that. If you want to hook up a controller to it. On the bottom, you have stereo speakers, which is cool. So it does have stereo audio. Um, two micro SD card slots, headphone jack. There's the back. It has these little rubber pads. They don't do much, honestly, when you're like, it's not like it adds grip when you're playing the game, but actually this one has a little like scratch or something right there on that one. Not a, not huge or anything though, but I think maybe what it's for is if you're plugging this into your TV, it's definitely going to help it from sliding. It'll give it a lot of grip when you set it down flat. So that's cool. And you can kind of like feel the grips on the back, but it's not really going to give you much extra grip or anything. And then on top, you got the triggers. Really nice triggers. I really like the triggers on this thing. Just like the little testing I've done so far. Again, I haven't played many games on it yet, but having the stack triggers is really nice compared to a lot of the other retro handhelds I've seen that don't have. They have the inline triggers and they're just, they're bouncy. They're kind of, they're not clicky. But I wouldn't want them to be there. They feel like an older um, system triggers. They feel bouncy, but like also kind of clicky. Not clicky, but like they think, I don't even know how to describe it. A mix between bouncy and clicky, but they're nice anyways. Has the dot matrix with stereo sound. Uh, this basically is copying the old style of the original Game Boy. I don't have one, unfortunately, but this the original Game Boys had like the dot matrix display on there. That's why people call them the DMGs. Um, but yeah, so let's power this thing on. We'll get into the hardware a little bit, and then what we'll do is put some games on it. So the software on here is the custom Ambernick software. I've seen some people that add a community software onto these things called arc os community uh, kind of built os i've seen people say it's better so there you go so this is this is the theme that it starts on 
again, I don't. I think once we add more games, it should populate with more systems. Right now, all it has is the Mega Drive, the Genesis, depending on your region, um, as a favorite section, PC Engine, Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, and the section for ports. So interestingly, this thing, I didn't expect to come with any games at all. It actually came with a few random games on it. So if we look here in the Nintendo section, has this weird game. I don't know what this is. Some weird, like, just, I don't know, 2048 little puzzle game probably just some some like uh free game out there that they add on these things this space twins apparently it's a game boy advance game i've never heard of it but it's on here <laughs> again if you if you get the version that has the other micro sd card it, it comes full of games this one does not come full of games you can get that if you wanted to i didn't want to get it because they put a lot of great games in here, don't get me wrong, um, but they put like 2,000 games, so just an insane amount of games. So it takes a long time to find the games you want to play, and then the system is weird. They, they number the games. Instead of putting it, just leaving them as they are so they could be alphabetical order, they put a numbering system on them. So you can't organize them in alphabetical order, and it just becomes a very weird kind of process to find your games and they also put a bunch of just like boat shovelware crap on there like if you look at like this one came with the same kind of stuff originally and you look at it it has like uh <laughs> four different versions of angry birds for the original nintendo obviously angry birds was not on the original nintendo but they put you know that's the kind of stuff they put on these and then they have all these weird uh mods they have like weird mario mods all kinds of weird crap that's honestly not very good but they put it on there and then you have to deal with that so i got the one without because i'd rather just import my own game library so i don't have to worry about all that weird junk getting on the system and just filling it up so in the ports section we got doom so that's cool these things always include doom which is nice mr boom um it looks like bomberman <laughs> i don't know if it actually is prince of persia that's interesting. Again, I didn't think this would come with any games on it because I didn't order the version that I was supposed to. But yeah, so those are the like four or five games that come on this thing. You can go in here and change the UI. There's different themes. There's this like comic book theme. Actually, you know, let's go on the themes later once we get more games on here because that should populate more systems. So we'll leave it on the simple theme for now. I can change screensaver settings. There's like a clock. There's actually a weird little app that has like weather and stuff, which is kind of interesting because it does have Wi-Fi. So I don't know if you anybody would ever use it for that, but you can if you really want to. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add our game collection on here. So I have a micro SD card here. 64 gig should be plenty. I'm not gonna be putting, I mean, you could put a thousand games on here when you're talking 16 bit stuff. So 64 gigs is plenty. So let's open that. So it's just a sand disc. The ones they send with these a lot of times aren't that great. Oop, jeez. So what, I, what I've heard is you put, you put it in there powered on, it'll input all your game folders onto the SD card and format it and stuff. And then you take it out. It's going this way or it's going to go upside down. Okay, so it goes in upside down, which is kind of strange, but so from what I understand, you power it on after you put in the SD card, it'll it'll put the game folders on there, and then you can import your games from those game folders. But we'll figure it out. It's definitely taking a minute to boot up, so maybe it's it's formatting it. Okay, so that took a minute. I'm thinking we're good now. So we're going to shut that down again, pop that back out, and we'll put that in our computer over here, see if that made the folders pop up, and it did, look at that. So, we put the empty SD card in there, and it put in all these folders for us to put games on. So we're going to put games on these, at least the games that we have. So let's open up our, this is our ROM library folder here. Let's pull back up that. 
no, okay, just do this. So it's kind of even there. Let's open up another one. So this is our ROM library here. So what we're going to do, man, look at all these folders. There's so many different things we can do here um, to the point where it's almost kind of confusing. Wonderswan color. Okay. Let's start here. I do have Wonderswan color. So I'm assuming we just dump them right into these folders. We're going to find out. But here's a couple of Wonderswan color games I have. I only have a couple. Some of the systems only have a couple games because I was trying to like get as many systems as I could so we could test them all on the stream tonight. There's our Wonderswan color games. Uh, regular old Wonder Swan, not color. Do we have any of those? We have one Pocket Fighter. All right, so we got those two. Let's find our Super Nintendo. We got a lot of SNES games. So let's copy all these over. Shouldn't take too long. We got a lot of games, but the files are very small. So it should be relatively quick for most of this stuff except the dreamcast and ps1 maybe <clears throat> see sega saturn okay here we go saturn let's copy those got a few sega saturn games okay sega saturn is going to take a lot longer here so there's all our saturn stuff so far that we have what's next sega master system so we actually do have a few master system games here master system is an interesting system i never played it ever growing up but it's a thing, so Sega Genesis. So we'll get all those. Drop those bad boys in. Shouldn't take too long. What's next? PSP. We have a few games in there. PSX, PSP. So PSX is going to be PlayStation. I don't know why they call it PSX. Oh, that one's going to take a hot minute. Okay. We did PSP. Now I think we need to do PS1, which is also probably going to take a long time because we got a crap ton of PS1 games. Maybe not a crap ton. We got a decent amount compared to the actual amount of PS1 games that exist. It's actually not that much. So PSX is what it's going to be. Some people just call it PlayStation. Some people call it PSX. I call it PS1. I know it's like, technically it's not a PS1 because it was the first one, so they didn't call it PS1. Eventually, they did call it PS1 when they made the smaller version, but I just call it PS1 just because it's, it's what makes sense to me because I had a PS2 and a PS1 growing up. We got the PlayStation done. PlayStation is good. I think PC Engine is next on the list. All right, PC Engine. Where aware. Also, you guys ever play the PC Engine? I love the PC Engine, dude. I never played it growing up or anything, but man. There's some nice games on there. Uh, some great shooters. Bonk. You guys ever played Bonk? We are definitely going to play Bonk here in a minute. I when we're testing stuff. So let's go. Blazing Lasers, R-Type. All great PC Engine games. Right there, guys. And it takes two seconds, of course. PC Engine is a weird one. It's like an 8-bit system, but it had the 16-bit graphics. So it just ended up being it's a pretty cool system. I it's too bad it didn't last longer than it did. Nintendo DS. How many games do we have on there? Ooh, this might take a minute with the Nintendo DS games. They're not too big, though. We'll see. <clears throat> see if we can actually find it. I don't know what it's going to be under. If it's going to be under DS or N. There are so many folders here. Holy crap. Um, ZX Spectrum, dude. That's cool. Vectrex. They got a Vectrex. A Virtual Boy emulator on here. I don't know what pet is. Uh, DS, DS, DOS, um, maybe a Nintendo DS, NDS, maybe? Let's where's it in at. Also, this is like backwards order here. N, E, S. I know it has a DS emulator. Where's our DS folder, guys? You guys seeing it? Am I just dumb and I don't know where it is? I have to Google that. Am I, I'm... There's also a lot of stuff on here, so I could just be missing it. But let's move on for that for now. Let's get our 64 games. We got a decent amount of those. Drop those in there. Should just take a sec. Well, a little more than a sec, I guess, but it's not going to take too long. Yeah, we got Pokemon Stadium 2, Rayman 2, Star Fox 64. Two versions of it for some reason. Okay. Rogue Squadron, Shadows of the Empire, Super Mario 64, Super Smash Bros. 
Turok 2, Wave Race 64, Worms Armageddon, getting Yoshi Story, 180 Snowboarding, Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Battlefield Adventure, or Beetle Adventure Racing, Conker's Bed for a Day, Cruising USA, Diddy Kong Racing, Donkey Kong 64, Dukem Nukem 64, and more. We'll get into that later though. Nintendo, Neo Geo Pocket. Neo Geo Pocket is a cool little handheld. Some cool games if you haven't checked that out. Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Freaking one of my OG systems. I love the Game Boy Advance. So many good games. Almost done. Game Boy, Dreamcast. So let's just, we're literally just going to put an NDS folder in here. See what happens. All right, so all those are done, guys. All those files are transferred. We can now go back. Oh yeah, we gotta put it upside down. There's the slot. Let's hope all these games, oh, you know what? We should turn this off before we do that. I think we need to turn it off before we just put this thing in there and boot it up with the new ROMs on there. Let's see if this works, guys. I'm excited. This will be our first time with all our games on here. Moment of truth, did it work? Hey, it worked. Wonder Swan Color, PC Engine, Nintendo, Game Boy, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. It worked. We put the Nintendo DS folder and it worked. Holy crap. I, I just add the folder and it recognized it. Look at that. All our games are there. Ports. Sega Master System, Mega Drive, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PlayStation. Heck yeah, guys, it's working. I'm excited about this. PSP. These are PSP games. Everything's here. And you can you can add favorites too, which is really cool. I like that. Last played, that's cool. Wonder Swan. Wonder Swan. It's weird how it's like mixed. I wish like the I guess maybe it's alphabetical order. I don't know. Because like why are these in between the games kind of weird wonder swan so now we just get into the games let's pull up wonder swan color here we're just gonna start launching stuff oh uh-oh didn't work um interesting let's try wonder swan color game I just realized my mic was like turned sideways. Uh oh, none of this is working. Uh oh, guys. Uh oh. The PC engine's working. The Wonder Swan could could be my fault, guys. I might be, I might have been getting the wrong file types. There's so many different file types for ROMs and stuff. What do we just launch? Blazing lasers. Uh heck yeah, dude. Blazing lasers. This game's awesome. And I died. It's really hard. <laughs> awesome shooter, though. I do want to check out the system scraping function. Not system scraping. Box art scraper. But if you go to scrape, you can scrape box art. And look at that. Box art now shows up. That's awesome. There's all our box art. For our PC Engine games. This art, we did not have it before. Now that we're doing the scraping. Some of them have videos as well, which is kind of cool. So it looks like Nintendo's not done yet. Oh, some of it is. The Mitch Island. Bubble Bobble. So we got all our box art showing up here, which is cool. I don't like how some of these have the weird, like, angle thing. There's different themes we can, themes we can try, but... So that's the benefit of doing this scraping is you get the box art going with your stuff here. So there's all our Game Boy box art. It also has ratings, genre, publisher Nintendo, platform, RPG, platformer, RPG. These all in the, you know, there's Capcom. Okay, so yeah, it shows the publisher. This stuff all just came from that website. It's just downloading it. Act Razor, Publisher Enix, Platform, 
platform, breakout, RPG, shoot 'em up. Yeah, this is really cool. So it's gonna show you the box art. It's gonna give you a rating. It's gonna give you a release date, 1994. Christmas, 1994, huh? Donkey Kong Country. Here's our Nintendo 64 stuff. So let's pull up one more Game Boy game here. So again, it defaults to the green color. I'm not seeing any option to have like a black and white. There is different shaders and stuff you can do. This is just Game Boy. So yeah, Game Boy works great, obviously. We would expect it to work great. Let's keep moving up. Super Nintendo. Let's try Contra 3. Screen looks great, by the way, in like in person. It's great, it's awesome. But yeah, this works perfectly. Sounds great, looks great. You know what we should do? We should try Super Mario World 2. It's one of the hardest ones to emulate. Looks like it's working fine, though. Yeah. Runs great. It was, the menu is one of the first areas you see to slow down because it has the, the rotating effects. But there's no slowdown here. This is the this is the hardest Super Nintendo. If, this, if it can run this, it can run pretty much any Super Nintendo game. And it runs it perfectly, perfectly. Sounds great, everything's good. So we'll move on from that. Super Nintendo looks like it's gonna be great. Uh, game Boy Color shouldn't be any issue, obviously. Let's look at Shantae. Shantae is one of those games, it's one of the best Game Boy Color games. It's also insanely expensive to buy physically. Look how good this game looks for the Game Boy Color. I mean, just like the best Game Boy Color game. Oh my gosh, I got destroyed in the brain, right in the dome. But yeah, of course, Game Boy Color is going to run fine. I'm not going to mess with that too much. Game Boy Advance. So you do get the letter boxing a little bit here for the Game Boy Advance because it's not pixel perfect. Looks great though. Again, in the in person, the screen looks even better. Runs like a charm, Game Boy Advance, no big deal. Get erect. Great game, by the way. So yeah, no issues at all, Game Boy Advance. Runs perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let's do one more. Let's do Mario Kart. It's a harder one to run. Curious what triggers. Okay, so the back ones. So yeah, I mean, this is perfect. This is great. No issues, no audio issues, no visual issues, as far as I can see. So Game Boy Advance, it works great. Moving right along, Sega Master System. So the Master System, if you don't know, that was the Sega before the Genesis. I mean, it was not a very popular system. But so, I mean, it's basically similar to the original Nintendo. Uh, colors are usually a little bit better though than the original Nintendo. But yeah, of course this is gonna work fine. It's a freaking master system. It's an eight-bit system. There's not gonna be any issues here. Okay, so this is the Genesis. There we go. We got Aladdin. Uh, this system looks great. I mean, full pretty much fills the whole screen. Oh, we 
got Aladdin. Great game, great Genesis game if you've never played it before. Yeah. So the Sega Genesis runs totally fine. So yeah, any 8-bit system up to 16-bit systems are going to work totally fine on this. Nothing to worry about there. Let's start getting into some other stuff. All right, so now we're going to get into the uh, harder stuff to run. So let's hop into PlayStation. It should still run PlayStation totally fine. Let's check out Crash Bandicoot. Still holding pretty much perfect 60 frames a second. Of course, you can play with the analog stick as well. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Definitely nice to have the analog stick. Even though when this game first came out, I don't know if they had the analog stick yet. They were... Because the analog stick did come later in the PS1's lifetime. So far, I mean, this is running great. So and this is PlayStation 1, guys. Let's get our mask here. Ooga Booga mask. Ooga Booga. <laughs> I love this game. I haven't played this game in a long time either, man. So many games I haven't played in a long time. That's the that's the cool thing about getting one of these things. You get to play all these games you've never played in such a long time, and it's just a handheld. Better at this game than it was at the other games. Ah, got wrecked there. Lost my mask. I want to try Tekken. See if we can get Tekken to boot up. Tekken's one of my favorite fighting games. I used to play it all the time with my brother. Oh, we gotta bring the frame rate back up. Yeah, 50, 60 frames a second, guys. So again, Tekken 3, PS1, totally perfect. Colors look good, everything looks good. Saturation's a little low on the camera, but it's way more saturated on the screen itself. So it looks great. So yeah, it looks like PS1's gonna be working totally good, guys. I don't think there's gonna be any issues with PS1 whatsoever 60 frames a second no issues guys so i think it's pretty safe to say most ps1 games are going to work totally fine on this thing it's going to work beautifully honestly i'm not good at gran turismo as you can see i'm losing control here <laughs> So I think the next system up from that is that's going to be harder is going to be Sega Saturn. So let's check out the Saturn. Definitely taking a dip here. Frame rate is taking a dip here. Oh, yeah. But, well, oh my gosh, the controls in this game are hardcore. So it's, it's showing 60 frames a second here. So it looks like Sega Saturn's working pretty good. Although it looks like, is, this, is it saying there's a skip here? Again, this emulator is a little different. Let me, let me double check. Okay, so I think it was doing a little frame skip. But I turned off frame skip. As you can see, it skipped zero there. And it's, it's working fine. I don't know why frame skip was on because it's not needed. It looks like, I mean, it's, it's, Dipping into the 50s, but like it's not something that you're, most people are going to notice If you're like really hardcore and you want perfect 60 FPS on Saturn um, You might have to get something slightly more powerful But you know what this is working good. I mean it looks clean looks good. I Don't know anything about virtual fighter so you can see the frame rate is dropping down to like 40, 48, 47. Um, so it's not going to be a perfect experience. You're not going to get the perfect 60 FPS. But to me, like it's not something that I'm really noticing. But I also don't have that much experience with Sega Saturn. So I wouldn't have any reference. Yeah, I mean, whoa. I've never played this game before. This is like some weird stuff going on. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know how to play this game. It looks like it's running good though, right? 
Let's make sure we'll turn off frame skip. How's it run without it? Whoa! I've never played this game before. This is interesting. I don't know what I'm doing. It looks great though. It looks awesome. It's still a little too bright on here. Should I turn it down? How's that? So Sega Saturn, I'm gonna say it works for most things. You're gonna be able to play most Sega Saturn games. I had one issue with the Sonic 3D Blast. Um, you get like 50 frames a second, so it's not perfect 60. If you want the perfect 60, turn on frame skip. Well, it's still not perfect 60 because it's skipping frames, but um, your mileage may vary there. You can either have the frame skip, get a slightly smoother motion, or have it drop to like 50. But to me, it's not something, especially with a game like this, when all the graphics are weird anyways, this old 3D stuff that's like popping in in the distance, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say Sega Saturn to go on this thing. I would play Sega Saturn on this. So Dreamcast should be the next slug up. I think Nintendo DS and PSP are going to be the hardest ones to emulate. So let's try Dreamcast, guys. Look at that. Gotta love the Dreamcast boot up. I mean, look at this. This is working great. The frame rate is dropping down to like 40. Um, again, though, like to me, it's not something I'm super worried about. You probably turn on frame skip and it works a little better. I think it looks fine, though. Again, like unless you're trying, you tr if you're trying to get perfect emulation, this might not be the system for you. But for, you know, $95, all the things can run. I think this is totally fine. Actually, Power Stone's running great. It's it's getting pretty much 60 frames a second, no issues. I'm not really familiar with playing it though. I'm curious to see Soul Calibur on here. I used to play this game all the time, my brother. Look at that, again. Almost 60 frames a second on Soul Calibur, guys. So I'm going to say Dreamcast is a go on this thing. If you have one of these, you can run Dreamcast. Um, some games are going to run a little less than perfect, but everything so far has been totally playable in my opinion. I mean, Soul Calibur and Power Stone 2 running basically perfectly. All right, so let's move on to uh, Nintendo 64. Notoriously hard to emulate. Yahoo! <laughs> Toad's my guy. Oh, I'm like, why is it not working? I was, I was forgot to use the thumbstick. Oh yeah, look at this. It's running good. It's running great, dude. Running basically perfectly, 60 frames a second almost. There's a couple weird little audio hiccups, but not anymore. It seems like they've stopped. So that was good. That's running pretty great. Looks good, guys. Um, this is running almost perfectly again. About 60 frames a second. No real issues that I've noticed. A couple little dips here and there, but really just barely, honestly.
Nope, oh, ran to the ground. Yeah, the audio is pretty rough on this one. Well, that certainly fixed the frame rate. The audio is still having issues though. Frame rate's good now though. Audio on this one's pretty bad. Audio aside though, it is running well, but the audio is pretty terrible. I don't know what that's about. Again, guys, there may, there may be stuff you can work on. I know there's different, um, I've heard that the, there's a different OS. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but there's a different OS you can get for this thing that's kind of community run. And I've heard the emulators there are tuned better, but I mean, it is running. So let's try the next, two hardest ones to do probably are going to be Mario Kart or I'm sorry <laughs> Nintendo DS and PSP those are the last two on our list to try out let's try Nintendo DS with Mario Kart here so far so good though so there you can switch between your two screens because this is the this is the DS so it is a two screen system where you can have them side by side there but for the, oh, you can do a bunch of different stuff, it looks like. It's interesting. So you could do like this. But on games like this, you don't really need the other screen. The main screen is going to be the top screen. A lot of the DS games that you're going to play are going to be games like this. But look at that. It's running perfectly. Yeah, yeah, this is DS. So we're emulating DS on this right now. And look at it go, man. It's working great. So DS is working. No issue with Mario Kart, at least. Wow, yeah, look at that. It's perfect. Yeah. DS works perfect, guys, on this thing. Which is really cool. Play some new Super Mario... Or Super Mario Bros. What is it? New Super Mario Bros. Is that what this one's called? I don't think I ever played this one either, so I'll probably have to play through this. Oh, there's our run. Look, where's our run button here? Got it though. Oh heck yeah, dude! The giant mushroom. Let's go. I mean, this is working perfect, dude. That's awesome. I'm excited about this one because I didn't play that much DS um, when I was younger. My sister did, but I did not. So yeah, guys, the DS works great on here. No issues. I've had literally no issues at all with the DS. The the biggest issue you're going to run into is um, just the fact that you don't have two screens. If you can deal with that and you pick the right games, you have no issue at all with the DS on this thing, it looks like. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say DS works great, works better than Dreamcast and Sega Saturn did. So the last one to test here is gonna be the hardest one. I don't know if it's gonna work. We only have one game to test, unfortunately, right now, because I kind of forgot to download more. And we have Final Fantasy, but that's not gonna test much. It's it's a port of the Super Nintendo version. Let's try Gran Turismo though. Oh yeah, you can hear that. Audio is really being weird. I'm not gonna change my view to like third person or something. Oh, this is running like half speed. There we go. Runs better in this mode. Holy crap. So in in this mode, it runs bad when you're like in the car. 
Let's turn on frame skip here. So it seems like with the frame skip on, it's working pretty much fine. The audio is working now. So PSP is gonna be the hardest to run, I think, out of anything on this system. You're definitely probably gonna have to use a frame skip. And I mean, there might be some other stuff you can uh, finagle around with, you know what I mean? But in the end, I think you can probably play it. It's probably gonna vary depending on the game. Some games may work, some games may not work. With this, with frame skip on here, jeez, I'm not good at this game. This game has like realistic driving. I'm not good at games with realistic driving. But yeah, now once I turn frame skip on, the audio issues are gone. Uh, all the slowdown is gone. It's running anywhere from like 30 to 50 frames a second. So I'd say it's playable for sure. PSP is going to be playable. It's not going to be perfect. If you want something that emulates PSP perfectly, it's probably not going to be for you. But if you want something that you can just play, I think it'll work okay. I don't think you're going to have too much of an issue there. So it's going to depend on the game too. If you're playing like a heavy graphic racing game, it's going to be an issue. If you're playing a PSP RPG, it might work perfectly. I don't know anything about this game, guys. By the way, I don't know any of these characters. Something crazy is going on, though. Whoa! Is that voice acting? I won't let you. I won't let you. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I hope <laughs> it's time to return the goddess. These anime. Look at this anime boy here. Dragon Master. Dragon Master. I'm gonna have to play this game. I like it. It's like cheesy already. I'll say PSP is going to be hit or miss for sure. But you, if you're playing like RPGs, less graphically intensive games, I think you'll be fine. If you're trying to play God of War or Gran Turismo or something like that, maybe like a Tekken or something on the PSP, you're definitely going to need to have um, auto frame skip on probably. I think I was using frame skip of one and Gran Turismo was working pretty much totally fine. So I think for what it is, it's, it's going to work totally fine. But pretty much everything, everything we tried worked pretty much perfectly up into, I mean, even PlayStation, all the PlayStation games worked perfectly. Dreamcast, um, you might have to put frame skip on, but it's totally playable in my opinion. Some of them, Soul Calibur, Power Stone 2, didn't even need frame skip whatsoever. It ran perfectly. Um, Crazy Taxi and... What you want to play? Crazy Taxi and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Need a little frame skip, but other than that, it worked pretty good. Um, Sega Saturn worked almost perfectly. Um, 50 frames a second, like no big deal to me. I didn't notice any issue at all. Uh, and then Nintendo DS worked 100% perfectly. No issues there. PSP, the worst of the bunch. But with a decent amount of frame skip, it's totally playable. If you're playing RP, PSP RPGs, I think you're going to have no issue at all. So for a sub $100 handheld, I think this is probably the best you're going to get. Sub $100 retro handheld. Now I do real quick. I was trying earlier in the stream to put it on the TV, but I was doing it through the capture card and it was being weird. I don't know if it was my capture card or if it was the system itself. So what I'm going to do... We're going to plug this into this, basically, is what I'm saying. And we're going to put the camera on the screen here and make sure it works on the actual screen. To like, fine. And Because if it's a big issue, I do want to note that. Okay. This is in the way. So let's try this. This is the last test we're going to do but I do want to make sure whether or not. So already I'm looking at this. It looks like that screen tearing issue was my capture card. Cause here you can see 
in the menu. It was happening last time. It's already not happening in the menu. Let's jump into something. So if you're curious, I'm using this as a controller right now. We're putting it on through HDMI onto the screen. Yeah, so this is working perfect on the TV. So you can use this as a console for sure, it looks like. Let's try something else that's in 16 by nine. Oh yeah, so there's there's no issue with this. The HDMI out works perfect, guys. The issue that was happening before was definitely my uh, dumb capture card or OBS. I don't know which one it was. Something just wasn't working right, unfortunately, which kind of sucks. I hope I can fix it because I wanted to kind of use this thing for streaming every once in a while. Yeah, look at that. We're playing Game Boy on here right now. This is awesome. Let's do Crazy Taxi on here, guys. And this thing does have a vibration motor. Like, it's working right now. Like, right now I'm getting vibrations in this thing, which is kind of cool. It's not going to work for most systems because most of these old systems don't have a vibration motor crazy taxi dreamcast does some playstation games i want to say do and then obviously some nintendo 64 games have the rumble pack so yeah it works guys it works great it looks awesome i definitely give this thing a two thumbs up 95 bucks you can get like 20 systems on this thing all the way up to psp dreamcast Nintendo 64, PS1, and Sega Saturn. Anything older than that is going to work perfectly. PSP has some issues. You can work through them, I think. Um, there's a big community around this chipset, these Amber Nick products. So there is custom OSs out there that you can get. Um, there's actually, I think Arc OS is one of them. Like if you want a custom OS, you can go out and get Arc OS right now. There's a lot of custom themes out there you can download a lot of user created stuff out there. So you're not just limited to what you get when you buy it either. You can get the games on here at purchase, but remember you're gonna get a lot of bloatware, you're gonna get a lot of random stuff as well. What I did, and it's just up to you. If you want something super plug and play, turn it on and there's a million games on there, buy the extra SD card for like six bucks. If you wanna curate your game library, I recommend just getting your own micro SD card and doing it that way. But yeah, I'm super excited about this thing. I'll keep you updated. If I'm able to fix the OBS issue, I will be using this to stream as well. Cause like, why not? I mean, that way I don't have to have two different sets of ROMs. Like, I, I mean, I, for higher end systems, my computer works better obviously, but for stuff, I do retro, a lot of retro gaming anyways. I'm gonna try and use this if I can. All right, thank you guys so much for hanging out. Well, have a good evening, good day, good afternoon, good lunchtime, whenever it is you're watching. As I always say, guys, if you're dealing with anxiety, dealing with stress, take a deep breath. Take some time to slow down. Talk to the people you love about it. Let them know. Talk to people you trust. If you hold on those feelings, they're going to come out eventually and it's going to be unhealthy when they do. You guys have a great night. Thank you for stopping by.